ladies and gentlemen, honored guests, and members of the Journalists and Writers Foundation with the John Jay College of Criminal Justice. I mark this a privilege and an honor and thank the organizers for this opportunity to participate in this discussion on building a new momentum towards the 2030 deadline for the SDGs under the general theme, Transforming Our World. I also take this opportunity to acknowledge the integral role that journalists and writers play in shaping public opinion and informing the world in an increasingly physically dangerous environment against journalists and writers. And I express my thanks for your commitment to covering the challenges and opportunities faced in seeking to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. In January of this year, Foreign Policy published an article by Adam Tooze about the development profile of the Bahamas. The point of the article was that the climate crisis has eliminated the resilience in the Bahamas' economic model, tourism, financial services, and the second home market. And we need innovations that can sustain socioeconomic health against the volatility of the climate change landscape. The annual cost of natural disasters to SIDS is $1 trillion. This is a perennial SIDS challenge against achieving the SDGs. Now, do we attempt to activate the politically unused regulations and policy reliefs of the international financial institutions? Do we continue to universalize the policies and individualize the innovations dynamics? Or should we universalize the innovations dynamics and individualize the policies? Do we address the SDGs goal by goal? Or do we invest in moonshot initiatives that create network effects more readily activating otherwise untapped capacities useful to and meeting the target of immediate community needs? The development community must address these philosophical mechanics about how to arrive at sustainable, resilient prosperity that eliminates genies and bottles from the search for and the discovery of sustainable innovations. A question we ask seven years since the adoption of the SDGs tells us this. Our politics, our finance experts, and our country interests are not connected to one another on common global challenges, not connected by language, professional language that is, not connected by experience, not connected by vision. Small island developing states are consumed by managing governance and lack implementation capacity. International financial institutions have nothing to lose that would incentivize commitment to reform and multilateral agencies lack scale. The Bahamas has made a pivot from this vacuum. But the reality is this. 1% of CARICOM state budgets are invested in science and technology. The Global North produces 60% of scientific literature. And 10 countries, not including the Bahamas, have absorbed 65% of World Bank loans. The government is now investing in understanding the science and technology needed to benefit from the untapped ocean value in the archipelago. The government has recently created a carbon market registry and will next offer a $500 million bond against sea gas sequestration capacity in the country's 100,000 square miles of blue economy potential. Now, not long ago, I was waiting in a line for a diplomat of more than four decades of accomplishment to sign my copy of his book. He asked one of my CARICOM colleagues, who was at the front of the book signing line, how does such a small country win a Nobel Prize? In that moment, I realized that a country with a $500 billion GDP only wanted a Nobel Prize and hasn't gotten one. And a country, small as it was, with a Nobel Prize, cannot get a $500 million, billion dollar GDP. We have each been winning alone, 
and we have each been structurally failing alone in the deficiencies of our resilience models. In one instance, I became aware of a small state that received development assistance on 40 projects. I recall the professional admiring the young geniuses whom he said worked in his office. He said they were all geniuses. But he said, Stan, every single project of the 40 we got funding for have failed. We simply don't have the capacity to deliver the projects. Here's an essential question a SIDS expert asked a donor country partner. This happened in a room like this, in a formal setting, with a microphone. Are SIDS states equipped for partnership engagement? And the reply by the professional was, country assistance is likely needed at earlier phases of initiatives. And this was beautifully diplomatic to say that too often the proposals for the initiatives come to us underconceptualized, and they will fail. Multilateralism has overemphasized bilateral solutions built on funding ourselves out of challenges. But we should be mindful that financing goals should not consume development ambitions into a solitary track. Funding is not the end of the development initiative. It is preparation for at least seven critical processes after first effectively, thoroughly conceptualizing the initiative. And how we sustain viable need is in fact a task beyond project management and we will develop that. We have unfortunately underconceptualized the network benefits of framework thinking for the maximization of delivery outcomes. The proposition here for me is that we should create a sustainability resilience framework. I would like to show a diagram of a rudimentary outline of such a framework. I would like to disseminate this for consideration by the audience at the crux of this diagram is this. In all of the discussions I've had on this subject, the question was, how do you integrate the private sector and financing into the UN framework? We're all motivated by profit, and profit is very important. And I would like to recommend that there is a way to get this done by adding finance experts with the right regulations and policies that will guide the modalities for how they support conceptualizing, executing, monitoring, and delivering the outcomes. Uh, this is a development that I would like to elaborate on in the uh, question and answer period if we have the opportunity. My submission is that we should physically integrate the private sector into the UN. The framework has to be enabling to deal with the acceleration of negative development disruptions and the need of states to recover quickly and cost effectively. This framework I'm proposing should give partnerships the implementation capacity for dealing with managing the conceptualization process, executing the initiative, monitoring the phases of the processes, and managing the delivery outcomes. This framework should also widen our capability to realize the innovation creation dynamics in individual and across initiatives. And I would stop here to say that the foreign policy article, the challenge was, what can small states do to actually genuous, genuinely, indigenously innovate to create resilience in your economic models? And my submission is that it is not to be done bilaterally or by the ingenuity of one state, but by a framework of multilateralism that has cooperation use the resources of many states and the ideas of many states to find the innovations and the solutions for resilience of individual states. It is also that this diagram should help us to, framework should help us to realize the thematics that are essential in the viable initiatives and essential for delivery outcomes and to realize otherwise unexplored partnerships and investment pipelines. And Later, if I have the opportunity, I will tell you and elaborate on the fact that 
inside the United Nations, in that multilateralism, in this powerful convening space, everything we do is bilateral. And we are yet to find, until now, I think, a formula that would actually integrate states, no matter the capacity they have or the skill they have, but based on the common purpose of a systems-based thinking. Now, I have adopted these categories, thematics, innovation, creation dynamics. I've adopted these from a colleague, uh, the president of the Caribbean Development Bank, who has used these in our discussions on the issue of how we create uh, resilience in our economies. But the genesis of this framework for me came in the fusion of two assignments I undertook over the course of this year, one in chairing a meeting and dealing with the transformation of moving beyond GDP, and another involving a discussion amongst colleagues on the fragility, the vulnerability of our states, uh, dealing with the cycles of governance and how those changes don't allow us to focus on sustained development. I think small states like the Bahamas can get ahead of the innovation challenge posed in the foreign policy piece with the benefit of policy tools like the Bridgetown Initiative, which addresses debt challenges by small states, and the Multidimensional Vulnerability Index, which deals with access to credit. Uh, these things being applied to a resilience framework as I have sketched it here. And I would welcome the opportunity to elaborate on it uh, if we have a chance for question and discussion. Uh, thank you very much.